good afternoon students in the today's lecture we are going to discuss the hybridization program in the cotton okay the today's topic for the discussion is the hybridization program in the cotton okay hybridization program in the cotton it's the today's topic for the discussion here the first of all first of all regarding the introduction okay why the breeding in the cotton or the hybridization in the cotton it is essential okay here the cotton it is a fiber oil and the protein yielding crop of the global significance cotton it is a fiber oil and the protein yielding crop of the global significance it is cultivated in the tropical and the subtropical regions of more than 80 countries of the world okay the cotton it is cultivated in the tropical and uh, subtropical regions of more than 80 countries of the world then the major cotton producing countries are china india usa pakistan uzbekistan turkey brazil greece argentina and the egypt okay these are countries are contributing about 85 percent of the total global cotton production okay these are the countries which are contributing about 85 percent of the total global cotton production okay in this one of all these countries india stand first in the area second in the production and last in the productivity among these country okay that means the in india that is whenever it is considered as the area under cultivation india stand first but its production in the production it is a second and the productivity it is last among this country okay that's why here it is very important to um, cotton variety to improve the uh, production to improve the productivity in the india okay that's why here we are discussing the hybridization of the uh, hybridization program in the cotton okay that is pretty uh, here the india it stands first in the area then second in production and last in the productivity among all these countries okay then here you can see the OBG and the species. The botanical name of the cotton plant, it is the Gossypium species. Okay, Gossypium species. Here I have written only the species because there are four varieties which are used for the commercial cultivation of the cotton plant. Okay, that's why in the botanical name, just I have mentioned the generic name. It is the Gossypium species and it is belonging to the family Malvaceae. Okay, the cotton plant, the botanical name of the cotton plant, it is a Gossypium species. It is Gossypium species and the family is the Malvaceae. Okay, then the species center of origin. They, these are the four species of the Gossypium and these are considered to be having um, originated in the different areas. Like here you can see the Gossypium herbaceum. Gossypium herbaceum, it is believed uh, to be the Gossypium herbaceum, it is believed uh, to be originated in the Central Asia, Central Asia. Then Gossypium arboreum, it is believed to be originated in the Asia Minor. Then Gossypium hirsutum, it is believed to be originated in the Central America. Then Gossypium barbadens, it is believed to be originated in the South America. Okay, and this Gossypium species, it is believed to be originated from the wild varieties and its progenitors are the Gossypium africanum and the Gossypium raimundi. Okay, these two wild varieties, these are believed to be the progenitors of the Gossypium species. Okay, that is about the origin and the species. Okay, the generic name of the cotton plant, it is the Gossypium and there are four uh, species of the gossypium which are cultivated on the commercial scale and these are gossypium herbaceum gossypium arboreum gossypium hirsutum gossypium parbatens 
okay here you can see there are two diploid and the two tetraploid species of the gossypium have the spinable seed fibers and these are called as the lint okay of the four species of the gossypium the two species these are diploid and the remaining two are tetraploid and these four species have the spinable seed fibers and that's why these are referred as the lint okay and these become cultivated cottons that's why these four species of the gossypium these are cultivated for the cotton production okay here the diploid the two diploid species are here you can see these are diploid species these are having the 26 chromosomes okay these are the diploid species two diploid species are gossypium herbaceum and the gossypium arboreum okay gossypium arboreum and the gossypium herbaceum these are said to be the um, old world cotton okay these diploid species these are referred as the old world cotton in some of the book you can find that these two species gossypium herbaceum and the gossypium arboreum these are also referred as the desi cotton okay these are the diploid species these are having the 26 chromosomes okay and here you can see the tetraploid species tetraploid species that means it is having the 52 chromosomes here you can see 2n is equal to the 52 and these are the two species gossypium hirsutum and the gossypium barbadens these are tetraploid species okay these are tetraploid species and these are referred as the new world cotton okay that means the diploid species these are referred as the old world cotton and these are also referred as the desi cotton okay while the new world cotton it is also referred as the american cotton <clears throat> the tetraploid species these are the new world cotton and these are also referred as the american cotton okay here you can see these uh, diploid species these have the 26 large chromosomes diploid species these are having the 26 large chromosome while the tetraploid species these are having 26 large and 26 small chromosomes okay tetraploid species these are having 26 large and 26 small chromosome okay of all these uh, species okay these are the four species two diploid and the two tetraploid of these all these four species among these the gossypium hirsutum it is the prominent species uh, which alone contributes to about 90 percent to the global production okay that means of these four species gossypium hirsutum which is a tetraploid species it is cultivated extensively that is it contributes about 90 percent of the total global production okay of these four species tetraploid species gossypium is is which alone contributes about 90 percent to the global production okay that is about the four different species which are generally cultivated in the world okay and that is all about their cytogenetics okay we have discussed the two diploid species and the two tetraploid species of the cotton here you can see the um, how that is these four species are having uh, the um, different phenotypic characters here, here you can see the flowering in the gossypium hirsutum in the first photograph okay here the flower of the gossypium hirsutum then in the second photograph you can see the gossypium barbadens okay and in this one you can see the gossypium arboreum and in the fourth photograph here you can observe the gossypium herbaceum okay these are the four species which are commercially uh, used for the production of the cotton okay for the production of the cotton okay then uh, area production and productivity of the cotton area production and productivity of the cotton india is the only country in the world where all the four cultivated species are grown on commercial scale 
India. It is the only country in the world where all the four cultivated species are grown on the commercial scales. Okay, here the Gossypium barbadens. It is uh, grown on a very little area. That is about 0.3% in the state of Tamil Nadu and Andhra, Andhra Pradesh. Okay, while the Gossypium herbaceum, it is limited to the state of Gujarat and Karnataka. Okay, Gossypium herbaceum, it is mainly cultivated in the state of Gujarat and the Karnataka. While the remaining two species, Gossypium hirsutum and Gossypium arboreum, these are grown in all the major cotton growing states in India. Okay, these are the most uh, generally cultivated species, Gossypium hirsutum and Gossypium herbarium, as these are growing in all the major cotton growing states in India. Okay, here in this photograph, you can clearly see that is the how the um, it is uh, uh, differentiated the regions which uh, the regions in which the um, uh, cotton it is cultivated, how these are uh, differentiated. Here you can see the north zone. Okay, the north zone or the northern zone it is uh, having the Punjab, Rajasthan, and the Haryana. Okay, Punjab, Rajasthan, and Haryana. Then here in the central zone, you can see that is these are the centers of the cultivation. Gujarat, Madhya Pradesh, Maharashtra and the Orissa. While the south zone, okay, south zone, it is having the Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh and the Tamil Nadu. Okay, Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh and Tamil Nadu. And there is also the another eastern zone. Okay, eastern zone, that is which is in which that is there is Assam. Tripura and the Manipur is there. Okay, thus there are four zones in which the um, cotton growing states are uh, divided. Okay, cotton growing states are divided. For example, northern zone having the Punjab, Rajasthan and Uttar Pradesh. Central zone, Gujarat, Maharashtra and Madhya Pradesh. Southern zone, Andhra Pradesh, Mysore, Tamil Nadu and the eastern zone, Assam, Tripura and the Manipur. Okay, that is how the cotton growing areas of our country are divided into the four regions. Okay, then the breeding objective. Why the breeding it is uh, essential in the cotton? Okay, generally the breeding it is carried out mainly to develop the variety which is having the high yield. Okay, to develop the superior variety which is with the following characters. Here the first character, the variety with the high yield. High yield means the variety producing the more balls and the bigger balls and the high lint percentage. Okay, that means the more cotton production. Okay, the breeding objective, it mainly aims at the high yield. Then second objective is the early maturity. Then third one, superior fiber quality. Fourth one is the better plant type. Then the variety which is developed by the breeding program in the quarter. It must be resistant to the diseases like the fusarium wilt and the rots etc. Okay. Or it may be done to develop the resistant to the different types of the insect like the bollworms, jasirs and the thrips. Okay, then it is generally done to improve the resistance to the abiotic stresses. Okay, due to the um, stresses in the environmental conditions. Okay, resistance to the abiotic stresses. And the another objective of the breeding in the cotton, it is the adaptability to the particular climatic conditions and the soils. Okay, these are the different breeding objectives. Number one, high yield. That means the more balls, bigger balls and the high lint percentage. Second one is the earlier maturity. Third one, superior fiber quality. Fourth one, better plant type. Fifth one, resistant to the diseases like the fusarium wilt, rots, etc. Then sixth one is the resistant to the insect like the bollworms, jacids, thrips, etc. Then the seventh one, resistance to the abiotic stresses. And the eighth one is the adaptability to the particular climatic condition and the soil. Okay. 
then these are the different breeding methods by which the cotton plant it is improved and the new superior varieties are released okay these are the methods which are used for the improvement in the cotton plant the first one it is the plant introduction second method it is the selection then third one hybridization fourth one heterosis breeding fifth one mutation breeding and the sixth one is the biotechnology and that is we can refer it as a genetic engineering okay which are now there are attempts to develop the transgenic varieties of the cotton for example the bt cotton that is the transgenic variety okay these are the breeding methods which are used to improve the cotton plant and to re to release the new superior variety number one introduction number two selection number three hybridization number four heterosis breeding number five mutation breeding and number six is the biotechnology or we can say the uh, genetic engineering okay that is uh, the the different methods which are used for the improvement of the cotton plant okay then here the first method that is the introduction okay introduction the work for uh, importing the cotton varieties in india that is it was started in the 1790 okay the work for improving the work for improving the cotton varieties in india it was started in the 1790 okay at that time the indian cotton was exported mainly to the england at that time the indian cotton was exported mainly to the england and the east india company with a view to capture the cotton market started the extensive trials of the introduced varieties mainly of the hirsutum origin towards the end of the 18th century okay and therefore in the 19th century many foreign varieties of the cotton were introduced in our country from the america brazil egypt sea islands and the other countries though the large number of the varieties were introduced from the other countries only few of them were found to be useful okay at that time the indian cotton was exported mainly to the england East India Company with a view to capture the cotton market started the extensive trials of the introduced varieties mainly of the hirsutum origin towards the end of the 18th century. Okay, In the 19th century many foreign varieties of the cotton were introduced in our country from the America, Brazil, Egypt, Sea Islands and the other countries. But only few of them were found to be useful okay here you can see the examples of the uh, introduced uh, varieties of the cotton that is cambodia cotton in south india it was introduced okay cambodia cotton it was introduced uh, in the south india okay then uh, the another variety cotton variety which was introduced uh, it is known as the mcu1 okay these are the examples of the uh, introduction of the cotton varieties in the india okay then the number two the selection okay how selection here you can see the um, uh, here you can see the k1 cotton k1 cotton reselection from the srt1 okay this is the example of the selection of the cotton variety k1 cotton selection from the srt1 okay then the hybridization third method here the many varieties of the cotton have originated either from the natural hybridization or by the artificial hybridization okay many varieties of the cotton have originated either from natural hybridization or the artificial hybridization okay and many promising varieties have been released by using the hybridization technique okay some of the examples of the uh, cotton varieties which are released by using the hybridization technique these are mcu5 mcu6 mcu9 mcu9 that is the parents of the mcu9 that is it is uh, uh, the progeny of the two varieties 
two parents used a MCU5 and a MCU8. Okay, these are the varieties of the cotton which were released by the hybridization method. Okay, then in the hybridization, how actually the hybridization it is carried out? That means the two technical operations of the hybridization that is the emasculation and the pollination. Okay, emasculation means the removal of the stamens or the anthers or killing the pollen grains without uh, uh, disturbing the female reproductive organ gynosium is called as the emasculation and pollination means the pollen grains uh, that means the viable and the fresh pollen grains from the desired male variety are collected and these are dusted on the receptive stigma of the female parent and that process is called as the pollination okay the how exactly the emasculation and the pollination is carried out in the hybridization you should know about the floral biology floral biology of the cotton here you can see the flowers occurs singly flowers in the cotton occur singly or we can say the flowers are solitary the base of the flower it is surrounded by the three leaf like triangular bats okay the base it is surrounded by the three leaf like triangular bracts and these are triangular bracts are called as the epicalyx okay here you can see the calyx okay the sepals okay here you can see the sepals these are reduced to the small cup shaped structure with the five lobes okay the calyx or the sepals these are reduced to the small cup shaped structure with the five lobes while the corolla here you can see the corolla that is these uh, corolla these uh, petals that is these are bright yellow in colored and the five petals are present and these are gamopetalous gamopetalous means all the petals are united with each other then uh, regarding the androsium here you can see the androsium the numerous stamens here you can see the large number of the stamens are present and these uh, stamens their filaments are united with each other forming a tube-like structure and that tube-like structure it is called as the staminal tube while regarding the gynosium here you can see the three to five carpels are present and here you can see the ovary is superior okay gynosium three to five carpels are present while the ovary is superior okay that is the structure of the flower in the cotton then here you can see how exactly the emasculation and the pollination is carried out okay that is uh, generally the um, uh, here we have discussed that the flowers are hermaphrodite okay flowers are hermaphrodite means that is these are bisexual these are having a male reproductive organ androsium and gynosium in a single flower okay here also we have discussed that all the stamens these are fused with each other forming the staminal tube okay here in the cotton flower the amount of cross pollination or normally ranges between 5 to 25 percent okay the amount of cross pollination normally it ranges between the 5 to 25 percent the crosses these are made one day before the flower would open normally okay generally the emasculation and pollination process it is carried out one day before the flower would open normally okay here you can see that is the flower which is flower selected which is likely to be open in the next morning okay it is likely to open in the next morning okay then the flowers are emasculated by cutting the corolla here first of all the corolla it is uh, removed corolla it is removed with the help of the small scissors or the curved scalpel and then later on very carefully the anthers are removed okay where carefully the anthers are removed okay then the pollens are collected from the male parent here you can see it is the emasculated flower okay here you can see there is in this staminal tube that is generally the uh, large number of the stamens are present these are completely removed in this flower this is the emasculated flower 
okay then the um, uh, pollen grains fresh and uh, uh, viable pollen grains these are collected from the uh, male parent in the short length of soda straw okay here you can see this is the soda straw okay this is the soda straw it is the short length soda straw with the help of this short length soda straw the pollen grains these are collected from the male parent and then this soda straw partially filled with the anthers it is slipped down over the exposed stigma okay here you can see this soda straw it is partially filled with the pollen grains and it is then uh, slipped down over the um, over the uh, exposed stigma okay then here you can see the these are the exposed bracts these uh, bracts then these are pulled up around the soda straw and these are wired tightly okay the brats here which are exposed these brats are then uh, these brats are then pulled up around the soda straw and these are then wired tightly okay then the emasculation and the emasculated and the pollinated flowers that is after the emasculation and the pollination the emasculated flower these are bagged when the selfing is to be done okay that is then these flowers are blagged when the selfing is to be done a small paper bag should be placed over the bud the when in the afternoon it opens okay then later on after the emasculation and the pollination the tagging is carried out okay the tag of the appropriate size it is wired or uh, it is wired at the base of the uh, flower and the, all the essential information it is uh, written with the help of the pencil on the tags for example the name of the female parent and name of a male parent then the date of uh, emasculation and the date of the pollination okay how that is how exactly the emasculation and the pollination technique in the uh, cotton it is carried out okay then the fourth method which is used for the improvement of the cotton varieties here the heterosis breeding heterosis breeding india is the first country in the world to release the first commercial hybrid variety in the cotton okay heterosis breeding india it is the first country in the world to release the first commercial hybrid in the cotton here both intraspecific and interspecific hybrids are evolved in the cotton okay both these methods were used to improve the variety for example the intraspecific hybrids and the interspecific hybrid okay in the intraspecific hybrid here you can see intraspecific means what that is these are these are the varieties of the same species okay here you can see the gossypium hirsutum okay here gujarat 67 and the american nectary lace okay gujarat 67 and american nectary lace that is the, the crosses are between crosses are made between these two species okay but these two these are the species of the um, gujarat hirsutum these are the gujarat hirsutum both these that is that means these are the varieties in the same species the crosses are between the same species that's why it is said to be the intraspecific and the hybrid which is released it was named as the shankar or the h4 cotton of the surat okay shankar h4 cotton of the surat okay that is the intraspecific cross okay the crosses between the varieties of the same species gujarat 67 and american nectary lace both these species are belonging to the both these varieties are belonging to the gossypium hirsutum and by the crossing the hybrid released it was named as the shankar h4 cotton of surat okay and this is the interspecific hybrid that is the crosses was made between the two different species here the hirsutum and the barbadens here you can see the lakshmi it was crossed with the sb289e 
okay the lakshmi it was belonging to the hirsutam while the sb 289e it was belonging to the barbadens crosses between the two different species hirsutam and the barbadens and then the variety released it was named as the vara lakshmi okay the variety released it was a vara lakshmi okay remember that india was the first india is the first country in the world to release the first commercial hybrid in the cotton okay that is all about the heterosis breeding now the fifth one the mutation breeding okay mutation breeding mutation breeding it has also been attempted for improving the cotton varieties okay cotton varieties okay here you can see the different varieties which were released by using the mutation breeding the number one is the mcu7 that is it is the x-ray irradiated mutant of the variety l1143 then mcu10 that is it is the variety it is the gamma irradiated mutant of the mcu4 okay then other varieties released uh, it was the indoor 2 okay indoor 2 that is the variety which was released uh, okay then the um, uh, another variety uh, is the mcu5 and another variety which is released by using the mutation breeding technique it is the rashmi okay these are the varieties which are used uh, which are released by using the mutation breeding technique then here you can see the genetic engineering or the biotechnology that is the method which is used to improve the crop okay that is the insect causes the more damage to the cotton than any other crop insect causes more damage to the cotton than any other crop okay and that's why the genes from the bacteria bacillus thuringiensis has the insecticidal properties okay the bacteria bacillus thuringiensis it is having a certain type of the gene which is having the uh, insecticidal properties that means that particular gene it releases the certain type of the protein and these proteins are uh, toxic that means whenever this protein it is utilized or it is eaten by the uh, certain insect then in the digestive system this protein will uh, act as a toxic substance and ultimately the death of that particular insect takes place okay but the protein which is produced by this gene it is not lethal to the human beings and the other animals okay that means humans if uh, they consume the such product then it will be not lethal it will not cause the death of the humans and the animals okay the genes from the bacteria bacillus thuringiensis has the insecticidal properties which are toxic to the insect but non toxic to the humans and the animals okay the monsanto that is the world's uh, largest seed company monsanto monsanto the transferred this uh, gene from the bacillus thuringiensis in the cotton and released the variety as the bt cotton okay why that variety it is called as the bt cotton because bt means bacillus thuringiensis a gene from the bacillus thuringiensis it is it was transferred in the cotton plant okay by the genetic engineering by using the biotechnological tools okay and that's why the gene when it was introduced in the cotton that particular gene it produces the certain type of the proteins and whenever the insect like for example bollworms okay whenever these are attacking the cotton plant that is these proteins are in, uh, consumed by these insects these bollworms and ultimately in their digestive tract these proteins will act as a toxic substance and ultimately the death of that insect or the bollworm may take place okay and as the gene it is uh, uh, used it is isolated from the bacillus thuringiensis that is a type of the bacteria and that's why that particular cotton that particular variety of the cotton it is referred as the bt cotton okay and the monsanto world largest seed company was the first company to attempt such practical work okay then the here you can see the gene produces a protein 
which enters in the digestive system of the insects and causes the death of the insects. And generally, these varieties, these are highly effective for the bollworms. Okay. This is all about the, this is all about the hybridization program in the cotton.